Hello everyone and welcome again. So continuing our discussion about the orthopedics trauma basic principles class. Here we will talk about injuries to the growth plate or also known as the physial injuries. Those injuries occur in children and they are common because the growth plate is a weak part of the bone so that's why it fractures commonly. And here we will talk about the definition for these fractures, the classification, mechanism of injury, clinical features, x-ray imaging, treatment, and complications. So let's start. So let's start with the definition. So physial fractures are fractures affecting the growing part of the bone, also known as the physis in children. 15 to 30 percent of fractures in children involve the injury to the growth plate and the growth plate is relatively weak that is why it fractures commonly in children and if the fracture injures the, the reproductive layer of the growth plate uh, it may result in a premature ossification and growth arrest now for the classification for these fractures so physical fractures classified according to Salter harris classification this classification is based on the fracture location in relation to the physis, metaphysis and diaphysis uh, and the fracture pattern and the fracture uh, and the pro prognosis of the injury and it is on five grades so for the grade one the Salter harris grade one is that there is a transverse fracture through the hypertrophic or calcified zone of the plate and the growth plate state is not injured and it has good prognosis so it is a transverse fracture and it has good prognosis and here we have a simplified drawing for the grade one we have here the epiphysis the growth plate and metaphysis and as we can see here the graph the grade one fracture is transverse through the growth plate like that a grade two is that there is a transverse fracture through the growth plate and it deviates away from the physis to a split of a triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone. So it is transverse through the physis and then deviates to the metaphysis. And the growth plate stage is that it is not injured and it is the most common grade and it has good prognosis. So basically it is a transverse and then it deviates towards the metaphysis like that now for the Salter grade 3 uh, the grade 3 is that there is a transverse fracture uh, through the growth plate and then deviates to the epiphysis for the grade 2 uh, it deviates to metaphysis metaphysis but but the grade 3 it deviates to the opposite side which is the epiphysis the growth plate states that injured because it is crossed by the fracture and it is intra-articular and uh, it has poor prognosis. So as we can see here, the fracture is transverse and then deviates through the epiphysis and it crosses the growth plate. The grade four is that there is a fracture that travels through the epiphysis, physis and metaphysis and it is liable to displacement, which if happened, result in asymmetrical growth. And the growth plate is injured and it is intra-articular and it has poor prognosis. So as we can see here, we have a fracture that goes from epiphysis uh, through the growth plate and through the metaphysis. So the growth plate is also injured here because it is crossed like grade three. So it might lead to uh, asymmetrical growth. In Salter 5, the grade 5, is that we have a longitudinal compression injury of the physis. It, it is more of a compression injury and the growth plate here is uh, compressed, so it is injured and it has the worst prognosis. So basically the growth plate would be, uh, would be compressed by a, a compressive force uh, hitting the bone like that. So it would be compressed. Mechanism of injury for the uh, physial fractures is, is that uh, the child would fall most of the times, also road traffic accidents, 
sporting activities, and in the hip, slipped upper femoral epiphysis is solter type 1 fracture that can occur without traumatic event. Uh, so sometimes even without trauma in this example. Clinical features is that the patient present with pain, tenderness, swelling after traumatic event, which is mostly a fall. And if the injury involves a lower, a lower extremity, the patient is unable to bear weight on the affected side and deformity is rare and examination is difficult because it is a child and uh, the child is in pain. X-ray imaging, the first test you send for is X-ray film and it is hard to tell if there is a fracture or not on X-ray because the epiphysis, the growth plate is radiolucent and the epiphysis is incompletely ossified so also part of the epiphysis is also radiolucent so it is hard to judge whether there is a fracture or not and the younger the child the larger the radiolucent part on x-ray thus the harder to look for fractures the easiest way is to x-ray the contralateral joint and compare them there is usually widening of the physial gap and incongruity of the joint and tilting of the epiphysis. So you should look for those uh, things, the physial gap, the congruity of the joint and the tilting. And if there is displacement, then it is easier to diagnose. And Solter 5 are quite, quite hard to diagnose. So here we have uh, an X-ray images as an example. So the left picture, as we can see, is that we have two views of the distal radius and we have a fracture here. Uh, it is not uh, visible on the uh, anterior view, but it is uh, visible on the lateral view because of displacement. It's a displaced uh, distal radius fracture. Uh, and as we can see, it is a transverse fracture. So it is a solter type one. Uh, on the right picture, we have uh, a fracture in the uh, proximal phalanx of the uh, fourth finger. And as we can see is that we have a fracture, transverse fracture, and then it deviates towards the metaphysis uh, or like that, deviates like that. Uh, and uh, it is uh, a solter grade two because it is a transverse and then deviates to metaphysis. On the picture here on the left, we have a fracture in the proximal phalanx of the big toe and it's a transverse and deviates to the epiphysis, so it is a solter grade 3. And in the right picture, we have a fracture that crosses the metaphysis uh, and the physis and the epiphysis and it's a, a solter grade 4. Now let's talk about the treatment for these fractures. So Solter grade 1 and 2 treated with the closed reduction and then casting or splinting. The reduction is through gentle manipulation to avoid injuring the physis. Solter grade 3 and 4 treated with open reduction and internal fixation with avoiding crossing the physis. And re-examination with x-ray in 7 to 10 days is necessary to check for late displacement and addi additional x-ray done in 6 to 12 months to, to assess for growth arrest. Complications include the bone growth arrest as we mentioned. The grade 1 and 2 solter hairs have good prognosis, bone growth not affected if reduced properly except injuries around the knee joint involving the distal femoral physis or the proximal tibial physis because the growth plates there doesn't have linear shape so linear fractures would pass through the hypertrophic layer of the growth plate thus affecting growth grade 3 and 4 may result in a premature fusion of parts of the growth plate and lead to asymmetrical growth and grade 5 fractures always cause a premature fusion of parts of the growth plate and lead to asymmetrical growth or growth arrest. Other complications include malunion, nonunion, 
and deformity and all of those are rare and with that we reached the end of this video thank you guys for watching please make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support more you can by subscribing to the patreon link provided in the description of this page thank you for watching and peace